Лисицкой. Hey, what's going on, everyone? I'm hanging out at Florida Tortoise and Iguana Breeders, and this is Adolf, and today we're gonna learn all about this ancient tortoise that my buddy Sam Pascucci has been caring for since the late 80s. Get ready, we're gonna learn a lot about giant tortoises. We sincerely thank all of you happy campers out there. Your support makes a real difference in our efforts here at Camp Kennedy. This week's shout out goes to our super fan, Ed. Thank you for all you do and for loving reptiles. Okay, Adolf, this is what he wants, Sam. Good to see you again, bud. Yeah, great. It's been, been a little minute, while. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I was going to knuckle you, but we're old school. <laughs> no, now we don't know what we're doing. There you go. Hey, man. So, you know what? It's been a while. We've got some new viewers on our channel. And we haven't seen Adolf in a while, so I thought it would be cool to kind of get back with you and talk about the challenges of keeping a giant tortoise, especially one that's over 100 years old. How old is he exactly? Uh, 106, and it's not exact, you know. Okay. But, but we've been, you know, we had an estimated age, and we started from there, and we've just been counting ever since. Okay. And here we are, you know. Gotcha. Um, you know, how did these tortoises first come well, they, they to came, be in this, into the United States? Yeah, they came, they came before CITES. Okay. And, you know, they actually exported them. There was not a control then. You know, they weren't, uh, you know, they didn't have a, a, a CITES protocol. So gotcha. they, they came in uh, to the country to zoos and breeding projects and, and the like, you know. Some were smuggled in, too. Wow. You know, and then they were seized by fish and wildlife. And, uh, you know, and then put back out in the, in the zoo community again. Gotcha. And, uh, you know, through the years, that was, Life Fellowship was, they were collecting animals like crazy. They had, geez, I remember when they, well, you, you remember Life Fellowship. I've heard of Life Fellowship, yeah. but that was a little bit before my time. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, they had, they were a, it was a church, wasn't it? It was a church. It was a church, and it was an animal sanctuary. Okay. Ramon Nogle there was the brainchild of that whole thing. A fascinating man, what he knew in, uh, about Galapagos tortoises just by learning, by, by being hands-on. Because back in the 60s, 50s and 60s is when he was importing or, you know, collecting these animals. And then he was breeding them. He wrote uh, he, he wrote some papers that no were really way. critical in the uh, in the raise in the breeding habits and uh, hatching the young and everything on Galapagos tortoise. So, you know Ramon Nogle and of course uh, Greg Moss, who you know is a good friend of mine. Ramon Nogle died a while back. We were good friends too. But really amazing to be have an opportunity to, to sit down and speak with some. You know, some folks like that that have that, that old world knowledge, yes. you know. All practical knowledge, you know. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. It seems like sometimes those kind of people are getting more and more rare these days, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And that's why this channel exists, is yeah. to try and highlight what it really takes to care for these animals. Because so much of what we learn is built on from a foundation, from yeah. what, like what you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. Um, and you are one of those guys to me, bud, like you're somebody whom I admire and respect for your knowledge because obviously the proof is in the quality of life you're able to give these animals yes. and the amount of animals that you keep here. I mean, I have my three, my three uh, giant tortoises. I've got, uh, well, I've got more. Of course, we have Cersei that you gave us yeah. last year who's doing magnificently. She's an Aldabra tortoise. But I've got two galops and my biggest female is about 350 pounds now. Uh, Adolf, or the professor as he is now being called, That's I right. believe. Yes. Um, he is much larger than 350 pounds. Uh, what are some of the challenges that you would say, uh, you know, are really difficult in keeping giant tortoises? Okay, well, one you're talking about, if you're talking about, you know, breeding it, you have to be able to, if you're dealing with glops, for one thing, I don't keep the males together because the males will fight. Okay. You know, now, I've had them together for years, uh, but then they were just creating too much of a problem for each other, so I, I separated them. Okay. And it, 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 it you know, it, it, it works much better for me having them separated because there's been injuries of them fighting. Uh, uh, he broke HMS's jaw once. What? Yeah. No way. And he's bit him, and he's you know where where he you know he had a a, a bad bleed, you know. So they can really get injured. They can hurt themselves. So, you know, to keep things safe, you I just separate them. So. The thinking is there that most people say, oh, geez, it'll, it'll never happen. You know, they uh -huh. will really, you know, how likely is that to happen? Right. But it's those unlikely things in our history 
in our knowledge base that happened when we didn't think it was going to happen that, that changes the whole thing. Right. Because he ends up dying. Because he ends up getting bit. He breaks his jaw. You know, so he doesn't recover well. You know? Okay. So, yeah, I mean, you have to be on it. You have to be on it all the time. And it's funny because, you know, a lot of people think, oh, it's a big, giant, slow animal. Yeah. But they can get into trouble really quickly. Oh, they do. They do. You know, I've just had a history here of them. This, this is the fences are so many different parts of the fence are put together because they'll fight. They'll break. I separate the males from the females certain times of the year. And so sometimes they'll break the fences down. But sometimes the Aldabras back here, we're going to get a chance to see them a little bit. They just want to break the fence down because they got to come over here because they think this the, is grass the grass is greener here. It's true. The grass is greener the on grass the other is side. Greener on the other and side. And tortoises are extremely persistent. Yes. What they lack up, uh, what they lack in speed, they make up for in strength and determination. Determination. Uh, you know, it's it Aesop's really? fable, buddy. It's uh, you know, yeah, it's, really, it's it's incredible. They're so, and you know, they have a great memory. Okay. And and so, you know, you sometimes you don't give them the credit for the understanding that they really have. Yeah. You know, I, I tell a story once where there was a time when we never had a, a gate there. Okay. There was a gate there, but we, didn't, we weren't using that side of the building. I'm out here, now this is going back 20 years, right? We're on with this. I'm out here with the Eldabras and, and then I'm, I went through there once and he saw me, Cecil back there saw okay. me. And he went, I went through there and I didn't, I come out and I seen him just standing there looking. And so I had this about, what is he looking at, you know? Right. And then I waited. He didn't do anything. He didn't bother with that gate or trying to get through there until a week later when he broke through that area to go back there. And he had never done it in 20 years. So did he just sit there and remember that for, for a week and then decide, hey, I, I, I've got to go. I'm going to go through there. I kind of like know? this discussion, and I'll tell you why, and I'll tell my friends out there watching why, is you're talking about animals who live a long time. Yeah. And, you know, in most cases, with smaller species, I know Galops will traverse large distances yes. yeah. in, in their native habitat. Yeah, sure. In order to do that, to know when food, when, when certain leaves are dropping or fruit are dropping, or when, when there's gonna be grass, they have to remember how to get to all these places. Yes, yeah. So there is a cognitive ability yeah. that these animals have yes. to figure things out. Yeah. And that's why it's so detrimental, uh, the pace of the modern world. It's the 21st century, right. habitat gets fragmented, roads become right. new barriers that these animals never had to deal with. Right. But I've read reports of box turtles starting to learn the roads and when it's safe to cross and when not. Yeah. But this is why these animals, tortoises, Chelonians in general, are facing so many uh, uh, difficulties in the 21st century for their survival. Um, yeah. They're creatures of habit, you know? Yeah. They remember things. Sure. And so, yeah. You know, there's a zoo study, and I'm, I'm really embarrassed that I can't remember the zoo that did the study, where they came out and they trained the tortoises. This is Aldabra tortoises. They target trained them. Okay. Where they had like a yellow dot and the tortoise would have to hit that yellow dot before they would feed him. So they get him to that stage. And then they, they would keep making it more elaborate where they would have to hit the yellow dot, walk over here, hit the red dot, and then walk over there and hit the green dot. I don't remember exactly how the, how the study went, but there were like three levels of it that they would have to remember to, uh, to be able to, to get their food. Right. So they come back, uh, I think it was a year later, and like nine out of the 11 tortoises still remembered the sequence without being reminded. Incredible. They came back 10, 11, 12 years later, and there was still, I think, around half of them that remembered the sequence that they had to hit in order to get the goal. That's really, really so cool. So they're, they're great with memory. I think they have built-in GPS. You know, you see it in the little guys all the time. Yeah. These guys are hard to lose in the yard. But, yeah. you know, in your yard, a red foot, right? Right. You, at that sucker's gone, you know where he's headed. Yes. Right? right? Yeah, he's going either, he's either heading for shade or shelter or back to their hide box or something yeah. of that nature or yeah. somewhere to eat, yeah. you know? Um, something else interesting, you know, what, what these animals, when you look at what, what I love about these, and I think this is one of the reason you dig them too, and why I love hanging out with you because we geek out, um, is I respect any animal that begins like this, okay, and grows over a hundred times its own size. Yeah. What this animal, even in captivity, had to deal with. I was looking at this. Come on over here. 
You see this, guys? This is an old wound that happened prior to Sam obtaining him. Sam, what's this wound about? Yeah, he, the, he was in Life Fellowship, and they had a, a, a new neighbor, and there was a teenage boy there who got a big breaker bar and went over the fence and, and tried to stab him. Jesus. And, and, you know, he just, for, you know, no logical reason, it's just something that he saw in movies or whatever, and he thought, you know, he would do it. So I thought, you know, probably he thought he would get away with it or whatever, yeah. but... You know, he was caught and, you know, he was, he was damaged. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. You know, even, the, you, can't, you can't save them all the time from stupidity, you know. But it's one of these animals, um, you know, that we respect, the tortoise. It gives us, you know, such a sense of, like I said earlier, Aesop's fable. Um, in my own life, guys, uh, what I've chosen to do, uh, we're, we're faced with many hardships in life and you have to just keep grinding away man yeah and and that's why i respect tortoises yeah. because yes. the, you know the ones that that make it to this size right. uh have really battled some incredible uh odds odds yeah, yeah. and they and they've done it through evolution too because yes. of course we know the tortoise started from a lizard it right. was basically an iguana and it was digging a hole to to get protection yeah and then it kept digging these holes out until the body started to evolve where the ribs flattened out and touched each other. And then the bones and that carapace would, would form. And then it has a skin over it. And this is, this is actually a, uh, it, it, this is like a laminate, the scute that's on here. Yeah. It's around an eighth, an eighth of an inch thick. But a lot of people don't realize if I were to take a can opener and I would have scraped his shell, he would bleed right there. That's right. It's so a living part of their body. It's a living part of their body. And the skew grows just like a tree. Each section grows separately. But you can pop these laminates off, you know, if they yeah. get an infection or a fungal infection underneath those laminates. And that's one of the things that has made um, your success with keeping these animals is the fact that you're very capable in yeah. treating these animals. Yeah. That's been something, uh, ever since you were a little boy, I yeah. mean, you would go around your block yeah. in Long you Island. Story. I know, he told me this great story. <laughs> he would go around and look for injured animals. That's what I did. I got on my bike and I rode around the neighborhood and I would always come back with a rabbit or a squirrel <laughs> or a bird or something. And I had this little room, it was up north uh, where the oil burner room was. And I would put all the, I had a little setup over there. I mean, yeah. anything that a nine year old had, I had, you know. And then I would try to, to help them, you know. Doctor I'd, them up. I, I buried a lot of them, honestly. Uh, but I did help a few, and I you did, did let them go. And you know you what's know? funny is... It was, uh, it was great. Yeah, Sam and I became friends. We were introduced by a mutual friend, and then our friendship grew. And he's helped me out numerous times uh, when I see some kind of ailment that I've never seen before. Yeah. He actually, through the years of doing it, has seen these things. Yeah. And you've given me a lot of great advice, and I actually... Send people to, to Florida iguanas and tortoise breeders. Email Sam. Yeah, he okay. may know. I appreciate it's, it. Yeah, no a worries, lot, man. A lot of people do. Yeah, let's and go. I, I got that uh, the customer that you, not a customer, but somebody that was looking at a fungal infection. Yes, that's right, the yellow fungus. Yeah, yeah which, is, good, which is something that basically, you know, I'm, in my mind, I, I, I pioneered the cure for that, for that fungal disease okay. in Cyclora. Awesome. Because, you know, I've done lab work, I've sent the lab work away, I've worked with Dr. Mater, and I have a protocol that just solves that fungal infection. That's really cool. And you yeah. know, he dropped the name in there, Dr. Mater, Douglas Mater. Yes. Uh, he literally wrote the book on reptile medicine. So yes. I know what you think, Sam's a uh, mad scientist experimenting on animals. He's not, he's worked in conjunction with a lot of, a lot of fantastic, Dr. Dr. Funk, Funk. yes. Yeah. It was a My great man, friend. yeah. But you know what, guys? Um, Adolf, obviously, is a well-loved and healthy animal. Uh, he had some problems a while back, right? We, we, he we, did. That was him, wasn't it, it Adolf? It was him. Yeah. You know, one thing I just want to mention, I just want to go back to something you said go earlier ahead. before I forget, which is, you, did you know that we were talking about, he starts at this size, yep. and he gets to that size. Well, if you calculate how fast, how much he's grown into human terms, yeah. An adult would weigh 3,000 pounds. There you go. Can there's, you imagine? There's the math for how, how much they grow. That's incredible. We would be 3,000 3, pounds. 3,000 pounds. That's amazing, man. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, uh, again, I wanted to do this video because we've gotten some new folks coming to the channel, and I really just, it's about the education here, and that's what Sam's all about. And I want to kind of inspire you guys, uh, because one of the things that Sam and I have also uh, talked about is how 
lucky are we that we get to steward these animals, right? It's and really a blessing. From a dream. Like it's, you had yes. this as a dream as a kid. Yes, as a kid, yeah. yeah. This was always a dream. I, I, had, I tell that story where I was, I, I, I was young. I don't know how, I, I think I was six. My parents took me to a zoo. I'm not sure I saw a real giant tortoise or I saw a statue, but I became infatuated yeah. with them, you know? Yeah. And so I always had it in my mind that I'm going to get those someday. And I remember, you know, talking to the kids in school, they say, oh, you'll never be able to get those because they cost a, a lot of money. They're very expensive. So I thought to myself, I got to figure out a way to make a lot of money, you know? <laughs> yeah. And then later on, you know, you say, no, you can't get them anyway because now they're protected and you can only get them in a zoo. So I thought to myself, I got to get a zoo. Exactly. You know, but whatever those boundaries were, when you have that passion to, to do, like you said, what does it take to have been able to create the farm and the health of the animals and everything. It takes dedication, it takes passion. That's where it really comes from. Definitely. That passion has to drive you because just like you know, I know you've been out there, I've called you sometimes, and you're out in the rain, it's pouring. Always. It could be snowing at your house and you would be digging around fighting to do something with your animals. It wouldn't matter anything because when you gotta do it, you gotta do it. You know, you, you have to, Things Sacrifice. have to get done for these animals. And one thing I'll add to the passion, you guys also have a little bit of stubbornness. You have to have belief. And, um, you know, it's, it's incredible uh, that you've attained this with this many animals and they're doing good. What, what's next? Like, you know, um, what are your plans? Because obviously a lot of these animals are going to outlive you. Yeah. Um, what is something that someone needs to keep in, in their back of their head? Yeah, well, you've got to have an exit plan, you yeah. know. So... Uh, some people will donate them to zoos and, and other organizations and rescues. You know, my daughters have been working on the farm. It's nice. a family-owned business, so Laura works with me. The girls work with me. Mario here is six years. Kurt's here 30 years. So, uh, you know, the farm hopefully will, will continue, you know. Uh, with with the you know with the girls well, under new management. Uh, it just it's yeah. just under new management. Yeah. And Very I tell cool. you, the young people today are so sharp. Yeah, you know, yeah, definitely. Yeah, they're definitely they're definitely sharp. Well, it's an honor to, uh, like, to like see Mario this. here. You yeah, know? and, and I, I mean, I know you're you're the epitome of health. Oh. But when you're young like that, and you can tie yourself up in these little balls and do this weird, sh you know, stay flexible. Yeah, he must do yoga. I don't know what he does. Anyway, guys, I just wanted to give you a fun video with my buddy Sam and give you a little sliver of what we discuss when the cameras aren't rolling. This is how he and I speak. Um, it's a lot of fun and we've been inspired by these animals and I want to inspire you for whatever you keep. Could be a leopard gecko, could be giant tortoises, it doesn't matter, just do it well and make sure that the animals are the focus, that the animal's well-being is top-notch. He has certainly done that. So check out Florida Iguanas and Tortoise Breeders. You can check them out online and also on Instagram. And uh, as always, thank you, my friend. Yeah, also I'll just say uh, yeah. uh, we're changing the name. Oh, Sam's Giant Tortoise Farm. There you go. It's going to be Sam's Giant Tortoise Farm. Yeah. All right, I love it. Appreciate Very it. Very good, buddy. All right. We'll do more with Sam soon. Take care, everyone.